Leave the burnt fish for Marcus and I. Yes. Okay, but give them the best, OK? Yes. What's left to go on? Just tomato and artichoke. Right, that's it? Yes. You done? Yes. Let's go. Elizabeth's menu has put a smile on my face because she's come back in here to prove a point that this chef can make pom souffle. Good on her. Of course, you know, the cod, of course, we know has got to be right. We just want the cod just flaking away. The key to a great souffle is getting all of the measurements just right. She's got to make sure that everything is beautifully prepared and ready to go. Once you start making the souffle, there's no turning back. It's all about timing. You've been running around uh, 100 miles an hour since you walked into this kitchen. Um, yeah. And what are you doing? Um, so, for the starter, it's going to be mackerel with a uh, grape caper and uh, apple salsa with um, a celeriac puree. The main course is going to be um, basically the idea is a whole pigeon. I've used um, the, the breast, obviously, the prime cut. I've got the uh, liver going into a parfait. I've got the legs confined down with some potato. It's going to be paired with um, cherries, uh, cherry tonka puree. So how are you serving the parfait? So I'm going to serve it in a jar in the middle of the plate uh, with a nice crusty sourdough bread, uh, all for sharing. So. Wow. Yeah. Work cut out, that's an understatement. Yeah. We're going to let you carry on running round. I look forward to tasting your food. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks. Sean's mackerel starter sounds very simple. Grape and caper salsa to go with it. So you've got the sweetness of the grapes, you've got the vinegary texture of the capers, sitting with a beautiful oily mackerel. It's got to be cooked to perfection. His main course is all things pigeon. He's got to get his pigeon cooked beautifully and served pink. If he's going to keep the skin on, it's going to be nice and crispy. The parfait has got to be smooth. Cherry tonka bean jerk, that I've never had with a squab pigeon before, so I'm really curious if this is going to work. I don't think I've had a day off for the last two months. I'm going in early to work, practising, staying behind work, practising, just trying to rectify my dishes. If I get these two dishes spot on, I think they'll wow the judges, so... Over the years, I think what's interesting is the way that the people who decide to enter look at who's won the previous year and say, I could do that. So each year, it means the standard is going up. And you walk into this judging chamber with hope in your heart. I think the uh, stakes are highest for the professionals, just because they are meant to know how to cook everything. I think it's incredibly exposing, and I really admire them for uh, putting themselves through it, because it can all go so wrong for them. What I don't want to see is the same old technically perfect protein, sauce, vegetables. How very nice. I don't want nice. I want something to explode in my mouth. I want spice. I want flavour. I want something that I'll remember. Mark, you've got five minutes. Yes. How are we looking? Uh, good, just finishing touches now. Just need to fry the risotto, finish the fish, all the uh, other garnishes ready to reheat. So it should be there. If there's anything wrong with the fillet to brill, the dish will be seen as a dud. It's all down to the fish. Fish is coming out now. One of them needs a slight bit more colour. I love the idea of that barragool. And that, with a lovely piece of fish, sounds very good indeed. Mark, you've got 90 seconds left. Yes. Mind your fish in the pan. Got my eye on it. This challenge with this potato risotto will be that if you cook it too long, it's going to be a mush. And if you slightly undercook it, then we're going to get little tiny slivers of uncooked potato, which won't be very pleasant. Leave the burnt fish for Marcus and I. Yes. Okay, give them the best, OK? Yes. 
What's left to go on? Just tomato and artichoke. Right, that's it? Yes. You done? Yes. Let's go. Thank you. Today I've cooked for you a, quite a Provencal dish. It's a pan-fried piece of brill sitting on top of a potato and parmesan risotto. Uh, you have barragul violet artichokes, baby courgettes and tomato. Thank you. Thanks. Enjoy. This smells terrific. It smells Provencal. Yeah, no, it really mm. does. And it looks beautiful too, doesn't it? Mark promised a Provencal dish, and on the whole, that's what I've got. The tomatoes are sweet, um, the basil, the courgettes. It's a good bit of fish. Tiny, tiny bit overcooked, perhaps. The potato risotto, it's a lot of very finely diced potatoes in a nice sort of Parmesan-infused broth. Mm. Um, but it's a very clever thing to have under a piece of fish. Absolutely everything is perfectly cooked. The, the artichokes really set it off. Everything just works so well together, doesn't it? I like the basil coming through, the risotto, but the cooking of the last piece of fish, we gave him a warning that it was starting to burn. I hope he's going to make up for it in a perfect dessert. Beignet, very nice. Little square fried donut like things. Very good indeed. Burnt tonka cream. Tonka beans are sort of the vanilla ish flavour, aren't they? That all makes sense. The flavour combinations are great. There's no sort of miso ice cream or, or some of the usual things we occasionally see. It seems like a classic dessert. If he's going to start throwing dough into, into the bubbling oil, that should be fine, shouldn't it? I'm not complaining. Right, Mark, you've got four minutes left, and you're looking a lot more organised than you did earlier. It's going well. Just finishing up, just plating up the last little details now. Are you happy with the burnt cream? Uh, Flavour-wise, yeah, it's absolutely spot on. This is just a crumble mix, just for texture. So is that the last thing to go on? There's a little bit of fennel crust, and that's it. Good to serve. For your dessert, I've made for you a burnt tonka cream with strawberry and lime salad and strawberry beignets. Hope Thanks. you enjoy. That looks good. I want to invest in Mark. Um, it's a thin beignet with a big strawberry filling. It's not just dusted in sugar, it's, <laughs> it's crusted in the stuff. Technically rock solid and just an understanding of how things work together and what people want to eat, which is the most important thing. That burnt tonka cream, like the rest of the dish, it fits perfectly. The balance is just superb. I'm, I'm delighted by all the other things, but the beignet. Oh, look, they've all gone. You can definitely taste the tonka beans in this burnt cream. It's got a lovely, smooth, rich texture to it. Love the beignet, packed with flavour. We've got a nice sugary coating. It's a nice dish. It didn't go entirely to plan. However, I got dishes which looked reasonably how I wanted them to look, and the flavour from what I was tasting was how I wanted it. So hopefully they like it as well. <laughs>